Hello, my dearest science nerds and welcome to my channel Let's Chemistry. The materials presented in this video are only for educational purposes. We have been waiting for this delivery for a very long time. Finally, we have got 30 grams of N-bromosuccinamide. We need this reagent to perform electrophilic aromatic bromination of 1,3-benzodioxal we prepared in our previous posts. Let's take a look at the reaction mechanism. We are going to brominate 1, 3 benzodioxal on the fourth position and prepare 4 bromo 1, 3 benzodioxal or otherwise 4 bromo 1, 2 methyl N-edioxabenzene. As a solvent, we use a dry chloroform NNBS as a brominating agent. We have found a very promising procedure written by psychochemist in Rhodium's chemistry archive. According to the procedure instructions, we are preparing to reflux bromosuccinamide N1, 2 methyl N-edioxabenzene for 3 hours in chloroform. All the reagents must be dry. To dry our reactants, we have placed molecular sieves in advance to the chloroform and the 1, 2 methyl N edioxabenzene. But first things first, let's start with bromosuccinamide. We have got only a limited amount, 30 grams of NBS. We have not performed this reaction before, so we have decided to divide it into two parts. Accordingly, for 15 grams of NBS is needed 10.5 grams of 1, 2 methyl N edioxabenzene and 30 milliliters of chloroform. After having all the ingredients added to the 250 milliliters reaction flask we start the heating and the stirring. The reflux condenser with ice cold water circulation is attached to the top. We use a two neck flask but one neck would be perfectly enough. After some time, liquid in the flask becomes transparent red. But as we can see it becomes opaque again. After three hours, we stop heating and stirring. The reaction flask is left to cool down to room temperature. After that, we are preparing to filter to get rid of NBS solids that were formed during the cooling process. We wash the flask walls and the filtrate twice with 20 milliliters of chloroform. Now we are starting to evaporate the chloroform from the mixture. We have decided to use a rotary evaporator. As we have filtered directly to the evaporation flask we can attach it straight to the rod of app. After striping the solvent, the crude 4 bromo one 2 methyl n edioxabenzene mixture containing succinamide is left in the evaporation flask. Some NBS is crystallized out so, we filter it once again. Using Rotavap turns out not to be as efficient because we had to use the chloroform to wash the flask and the funnel and had to distill off the solvent once again. Unfortunately, during all of these manipulations loss of some products is unavoidable. The solvent could be perfectly removed with simple distillation, as we can see chloroform distillation is a fast process. I will try to improve my work up in the next run. As chloroform fraction is over, we are changing the receiving flask and turning the vacuum on the temperature and the system is slowly rising. We can observe the first drops of the distillate at 170 degrees Celsius. NBS is being distilled along with the product and crystallizing as it cools in the condenser. When the vapor temperature within the system reaches 179-180 degrees distillation stops, there is only some black organic junk left in the evaporation flask. Now, we need to dilute the collected product mixture with 30 milliliters of diethyl ether. We add sodium hydroxide to the mixture. According to the instruction, the product must be stored over solid sodium hydroxide for three hours. At this point, the solids in the flask become chunky and the liquid turns into faint blue coloration. We are decanting the liquid to the separation funnel. We need to wash it thoroughly with distilled water. As we can see after water addition blue color has vanished immediately. Due to washing with distilled water the nastiest emulsion has been formed. It has not completely separated even after several hours of standing. To ease the separation, we add ECM and shake again but the situation becomes even worse. After a few hours, emulsion partially separated. We drain the lower phase and add dry magnesium sulfate. Adding sulfate causes instant separation of layers. We recovered the organic phase. We decided to extract water with one more portion of DCM. This time as we can see separation is much faster than before. We are combining all the extracts and drying with magnesium sulfate once again. Now we need to evaporate. We are charging our evaporation flask once again and connecting vacuum to the rotary evaporator. After evaporation yellowish transparent liquid is obtained. This must be pure enough for the next steps of synthesis. 4 bromo one 2 methyl n edioxabenzene The total yield is 9.5 grams which represents 61% of theory. This is not bad taking into consideration that we have performed this reaction for the first time and the yield of the procedure described in the literature was just 67%. Thanks for watching guys.